first ask, first let me, let me pray. Gracious God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for another opportunity, God, to stand before your people and to teach your word. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our Lord. Thank you and amen. Okay, so uh, as many of you know, I am in school. <laughs> and so I thought it thought it be good for me to kind of go over some things that I have learned thus far. And so I'm taking a class it's, uh, called The Life of Christ. And we're studying the four gospels, um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And right now we're in the book of Matthew. So if you will, I would ask that you would turn your Bibles to Matthew 5. Um, we're going to start, it's the Beatitudes. Uh, Matthew 5, and we probably won't be able to get through all of them tonight. Um, but we're going to do at least four of them, the Beatitudes, because I would like feedback. I would like, you know, everybody to join in if you have something to say say it you know so um <clears throat> so in the book of matthew there are five uh, discourse that talk about the life of christ so tonight we're gonna like i said before we were we're going to discuss the first discourse and i'm sure reverend hancock and reverend thurman know what i'm talking about um, I never knew that uh, this was to be true. You know, I just, you read Matthew and you go through and you, you never know that it's broken down into sections. But since I've been in class, I have learned this. And so uh, the Beatitudes is part of the discourse that we're gonna talk about tonight, which is the first one. And uh, it's got here in um, this uh, section, uh, it will reveal uh, eight qualities of God's blessing, meekness and mercy, poorness in the spirit and pure, and poorness in spirit and purity of heart, mourning and hunger, peacemaking and persecution. And like I said earlier, we probably will not get to do all of them, but I pray that you will be blessed with what I have thus far. Um, so if I could get someone to read Matthew 5, and, and let me, before you start, um, so the, the Beatitudes is part of uh, Jesus does when he was uh, the Sermon on the Mount. And um, in this part, he, you know, he decided is part of his teaching on the kingdom. And so, um, you can see that the first uh, of this is the five books uh, is about Jesus. The first five discourses are about Jesus' life. And one of them is the Sermon on the Mount. It's called uh, Jesus' in Inaugural Address. And um, so, like I said, he, I'm a little nervous, so please, please, you know, bear with me. <laughs> uh, I just thought it was interesting for to hear this about Matthew, um, like I said, I've never seen it broken down like this. And when um, my teacher got to talking about it, and I was like, I was just in awe. I'm like, wow, really? So like I said, if I could get someone to read Matthew 5, and you can go ahead and start with one, verse 1. Um, and read, we're going to do, read to verse six. Yeah. You said Matthew. Matthew, verse, uh, chapter five, I'm sorry. Uh, start with verse one and go ahead and read. You can go ahead and read all of them, but we're not going to do all of them. So read. Okay. Matthew, I think it's I'll, I'll start. So one through six, is that what you? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll start. Uh, one day as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up 
on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples gathered around him and he began to teach them. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. Okay. So each of these have um, a meaning, you know. It says, you know, God blesses those who are poor and realize their need. So uh, when uh, we were talking about this class, uh, it's, it was saying that blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The poor in spirit are those who feel a deep sense of spiritual Des destitution, I'm sorry, and comprehend their nothingness before God. The kingdom of heaven is theirs because they seek it and therefore find, abide, and, and find and abide in it. And you know what abide means. Abide can also mean remain. Uh, to this virtue, it, it is opposed the pride of the Pharisees which caused him to thank God that he was not as other men and to despise and reject the kingdom of heaven. There must be emptiness before there can be fullness. And so poverty of spirit precedes richness and grace in the kingdom. So you see here, it says, God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for the kingdom of God for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. So God blesses those who depend on God. And anytime anybody want to ch chime in, I welcome that. I would appreciate it. Um, like I said, when we started reading this and it really just gave me a different outlook on the Beatitudes. And so um, the second one, it says, blessed, um, God blesses those who mourn for they will be comforted. And so blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted. And when I heard that, when you hear mourn, you know, you, you think you're mourning for someone, you know, someone that's some passed away or something like that. But no, that's not what it is. It's uh, the blessing is not open all that mourn upon those who mourn in, re it's in reference to sin. They shall be comforted by the discovery and appropriation of God's pardon. But all mourning is traced directly or indirectly to sin. We may take it, therefore, that it is widest since the beatitude covers all those who are led by mourning to discerning of a sin or and who deplore its effects and consequences in the world as to yearn for and seek the deliverance which is in Christ, deliverance in Christ. So, um, you know, they recognize their needs and present to, um, I'm sorry, present to a recognize their needs. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop right there with those two. <laughs> and I would like to, if you all would come off a of mute and uh, have a little discussion about those two. And if you see where, um, like the first one, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And then the other one is blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted. I just kind of would like to know some feedback on those two for right now. I was just thinking about the first one, uh, Reverend Lewis, where it was talking about blessed are the poor in spirit. And it just kind of dawned on me to be uh, what that, you know, to be empty and know that you, but for God, you wouldn't have anything, you know? Mm -hmm. 
and that you have to to recognize that in and of yourself you have no strength so that just kind of because to me poor in spirit when I first when I first read it I'm just thinking oh there's somebody you know a little depressed a little down da 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 and it's really not even that it's just that they recognize without the spirit I'm I'm nothing is is that what I'm getting is that the that's what I was taking from what you were saying Uh uh-huh yeah and that's and that's how I look at it how I was because I, you know, you've seen, you've read the Beatitudes many times. And like I said, Reverend Hancock and Reverend Thurman, you know, they've been to seminary, so they probably see it a little different, but, you know, being my first time doing this or hearing it, when I read them, I'm, I was the same way, poor in spirit. What does that mean? Right. You know, but once the teacher started explaining it to us, and then, you know, when I read it here in my book, I was like, oh, okay, that's what that means. It's not talking about, like you said, depressed or something like that. They're talking about that, you know, you're depending on God. You're, you're, you're depending on God for whatever. You know, it's not just because you're poor in spirit. Am, am I on the right page, Reverend Hancock or Reverend Thurman? Can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, since you're bringing up seminary, I'll talk, talk from, from that perspective. Okay. Um, there's a kind of theological debate as far as what the poor in spirit means. Um, and I think this is also in conjunction with our sermon series when it says that the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to give sight to the blind and set the oppressed free okay. you know in the in the white world they see this as um simply a dependent on the spirit um devoid from economic poverty mm-hmm. so they could so they use it as just so they use it as a, an opportunity to devoid their teaching theology ministry um, that it so that it does not offer liberation for the poor, but be very clear that uh, poor in spirit is all is, is not just spiritual poverty, but it's financial, economic poverty. Um, this Jesus, you know, again is on the side of the oppressed, and his ministry are for those who are. Um, in in both spiritual, physical, mental, <laughs> and economic poverty. So, the, what I, what I'm saying is, you know, let's be clear that that's a part of the conversation too. That it's a dependent upon Christ for uh, our spiritual salvation, but also He has promised to give us life uh, in this world too. Um. So, you know, in, in you, I don't know if that's a, in your own classes, if that's something that is stressed, but, you know, in the Black community, you know, um, that, that our mission is to support those who are economically challenged, because that's where most of us are. How does God speak to the oppressed? How is God, how does the gospel speak to me? I, I, you know, you can say this and that, but if I don't have food on my table, if I'm hungry, I can't hear right. what you're saying. Because <laughs> right. my stomach is growling. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that is a part of the conversation that I just wanted to kind of throw in there, you know, in, in terms of Black theology, that we see this as all-inclusive, you okay. know, so. All right. And, and that's that's why, you know, I, I said I, I, I picked these because it seemed like we did these once before, but now that I'm, now that I'm in class, you know, it's like okay, I need to, you know, see that I make sure I'm getting a clear understanding of what the beatitudes are and what they mean. Um, someone sent me a message and said, "Bless." It says for the first one, 
Blessed are the wells of your heart, for God hears them. The wells of your heart, because, because God hears them. So, um, it does, and I do have here in my notes, there must be emptiness before there can be fullness. And so poverty of spirit precedes richness and grace in the kingdom of God. So I think I'm on the right page. <laughs> um, okay, so the second one was, uh, um, what was it? Blessed are, the, are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. So um, anybody, like you say, you know, when you hear that, when, for me, when I first heard that, when they say mourn, I'm thinking like someone mourning over someone's death or something like that. But here it's saying in reference to sin. So now that I don't, I don't understand necessarily, but I, I guess that there are points that you can mourn over everything, you know what I'm saying? But, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you need a comfort in knowing, you know, and, and you can mourn um, a, a sinful life, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and need comfort in that. But um, that was just an interesting take that is directly correlated to sin. So that's, that's, that's an interesting one for me. I'm gonna have to chew on that a little bit. And, and here in my notes, it says, but all mourning is traced directly or indirectly to sin. So, um, yeah, that, that's a little tough for me because uh, I, I think I found, I think I found, uh, well, first of all, good, good evening, by the way. I would just change evening. my name because, because it's black history, when I just want to be funny. So, so just, just ignore me. Um, so, like, when you said the, it directly, indirectly to sin, um, it kind of, it's hard because it's like, you see people who are innocently killed and their parents are mourning. So, is that a, is that a indirectly sin? Is, did their parents indirectly sin or did they, the person, their self directly sin and they, and they got killed or they were just an innocent bystander? You know what I mean? Because um, I saw something in Indianapolis where, you know, this kid, he was uh, 17. He, uh, I posted my official page. He was 17, and he uh, was an entrepreneur, and he would bring fruit to the community. And, it, and somebody took his life. And he like, had so much going for us. He was only 17. Um, I don't know. That would probably be a question for Reverend. Well, I guess it's indirectly seeing. Uh, because yeah. yeah, because sin caused that situation. If we're gonna go on the context of what you know, you bring, you know, what was discussed there. But like I said, I'm gonna have to chew on that one a little bit more. It's kind of, kind of, it's, it uh, rests a little my spirit right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I can add to I can uh, add to the comment. Is that's okay? Yeah. Uh, it, in my own studies, um, both in my own personal biblical studies and in the seminary studies, you know, I see this. To me, there's a there's a debate over what this means in the white community versus the black community. All right, the white mm -hmm. community, the white theology, wants to take this and make it devoid of the black experience and for me this text speaks directly to the black experience jesus is like a re revolutionary he's coming in and breaking down doors and breaking down principalities and powers and he's turning it on his head originally uh, well people you know people who are poor are, are marginalized pushed to the edge of the si to society and seen as nothing uh, and have no value. But Jesus comes on the scene and said, no, you're not cursed as society says you are, but you're blessed. Blessed are those who are poor. Right. All right. And, and, and see their dependence upon God for the kingdom of heaven belongs to this. Blessed are those who mourn, who've, who've had a, 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 a loved one or, or see people in your community marginalized or wrongfully shot or wrongfully hurt. Blessed are you, you know, um, Jesus is trying to uh, bring some level of 
of of of of understanding and power and he's up, uplifting a community that is that is normally downtrodden and seen as worthless but jesus here in, in my again in my own studies and what i've seen here is empowering a people to say there's more power than you think you know that god sees you god knows you he sees your crying he sees your pain he feels the things that you're going through and 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 um that's the that's the work of christ to turn to uh shift the powers from those who are lording it over people and to giving it to those who are powerless uh for me i see this text as um yes including those who have lost a also those who have who are you know who may be into sin who may be have temptation or fallen into sin as well and i think that the the debate is or the i don't know we have the, the white community has to be has to see this <laughs> uh that this is what christ's mission is not to uphold your um your money, not to uphold your status, not to continue to maintain um, your power, but Christ is coming in to say, um, though who those who are really blessed, who recognize their need for them, and the poor, no one like the poor sees their need, sees their dependence on Christ like the poor. No one, because it's all they have is Christ. All we have is Jesus Christ. We don't have money and power to depend on. All we have is Christ Jesus. Um, and those who have faith and depends on him are those who are really the ones who are blessed and are close to God. So I know I said a lot, I'm sorry, but I, okay. that's kind of, this is kind of what I've been studying and talking sense, about. Though. Yeah, that makes sense <laughs> though. Because even when you yeah. talk about mourning, we mourn over more things than just the loss of life. You know, we mourn over the loss of, you know, many of us are, you know, or in our community, we do, we've lost so much more than just life, you know, in, in certain things. And we mourn not being able to maybe care for our families or not being able in such a way, you know? So I guess I can understand when you talk about it from that slant. And then, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I, can, I can chew on that a little bit better. <laughs> I understand uh, a little more. I have a question. Okay. Uh, it seemed like when I remember looking at this some time ago and you know it, before every verse it's the word blessed you know blessed are the poor in spirit bless those who mourn blessed the me bless 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 and we use the word blessed a lot in uh, this context you know what have, have the word blessed uh been defined uh um, you know uh does it mean that you know we're going to experience hope and joy uh it means happy. What, what 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 was it well, defined as in this context like i'm i'm looking at my book right here and it it does say happy or blessed in turn jesus pronounces blessings on the poor in spirit those who mourn those who blessing the meek you know he's put he's pronouncing blessing um to a sense that it the way i see it and i could be wrong and someone can correct me um when you see the word blessed that you're blessed even if you are poor in spirit you're still blessed um mm -hmm. even if you're in mourning, you're still blessed. And I, like I said, I, I could be wrong, but that's how I'm seeing it. Um, so there's, there's a, there's a couple of things, and I, I'm, I'm thankful because this, I think the word blessed is, is overused. I, I feel you, yes. <laughs> um, and there's a, a couple of ways to, uh, in essence, translate the word. Happy is the simplest. Um, there's another Greek term, and if I try to call it, I'm going to sound like uh, a baby trying to pronounce their own first name, uh, but that means 
um, in essence, that you have you have the kingdom of God within you, right? So those who have the kingdom of God within them, um, you will be filled. Those who have the kingdom of God in you, basically, when you weep, you will laugh. Um, so that's an that's an alternative way to look at it. And then I don't know if I don't know if this still fits in terms of the discussion, but when you were talking about um, the conversation of the poor uh, or the poor in spirit, or even those that mourn. And I don't know if I'm giving y'all feedback or not. It feels like it. Um, in both Matthew and Luke, uh, those those beatitudes, as we call them, are immediately followed by um, the woe, <laughs> woe to you, woe to you, and woe to you. And it's really talking directly to those who were who were rich. Um, so to to Pastor's point, that this text, this conversation. Uh, uh, Jesus was really talking to those who were kind of sitting high on the hog and not doing their part to to make it a level playing field. So he was like, hey, you know, happy are those who, who are these things. And then woe to y'all that's sitting up there thinking that y'all got it all together because y'all really don't. So um, in the Luke text particularly, and I, I put this in the chat, um, Luke doesn't say poor in spirit. Luke specifically says, uh, blessed are you who are poor. Um, and so that helps us to understand that, you know, they were really looking at um, the conversation of money and wealth. I have a, a, a definition of blessed here as well. It says it means happy or to be congratulated. And that was different for me. So to, you know, like, yeah, to be congratulated. Hmm. All right. Hmm. Let's um, go ahead and go to uh, verse. Wait a minute, where I, I forgot where I left off at. Verse five, where it says, God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. Um. I know in some version it says, bless the meek. Um, so I have here, and, and I'm reading from my notes. <laughs> Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Uh, the humble would receive far greater than the arrogant or prideful. <laughs> Not only do the meek enjoy more on life on earth, because of their ability to, to be content, but they will possess and enjoy the earth after Jesus returns and triumphantly enter. So I can see, you know, being, you know, being humble because you do have, uh, like, like Shannon was talking about, uh, uh, the rich. <laughs> think they got it going on and everything but here we are the poor we're kind of content in what we're what we have mm -hmm. whereas you know you if to me it is and I know I keep putting myself in it maybe I'm wrong for doing that but um you gotta put yourself in blessed, blessed are the meek congratulations to the meek uh the humble you have to be humble you, you know, Paul talks about being content in whatever, you know, uh, we was having a conversation in class last night about how the world, how people live in the world and, you know, they're wanting to be, have a fashion statement, you know, I got to have the latest this and the latest that. And, but to me, you know, you have to have the ability to be content with what you have. Because everybody, you know, I think my granddaughter told me this one time when she was here, you know, when you're materialistic, <laughs> you can't take none of the stuff with you if something happens to you. You're going to come, you're going to leave the same way you came. 
And when she said that to me, that just kind of blew my mind. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> you know, so content, the ability to be content with what you have. And to me, when you're content with what you have, then God can bless you in abundance with, you know, like it says in the word, with the riches in the glory, you know, because he, he's, he, he owns all that. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I'm explaining it right, but that's how I see it, you know, be content that's with what good. you have. You know, I, you look, you look at people, well, I want this car, I want this, or I want that, but I'm content or other people may be content in having just a little, what? Something that'll get them from point A to point B. So mm -hmm. when you or say- Or not having it at all. <laughs> There's some people that don't, they don't want it, right? Because with certain things comes added pressures and added responsibilities. Um, right. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, from, from material things to things we hold, hold dear we hold children dear i i told my daddy at 12 i wasn't having kids like i knew that that was a thing <laughs> i don't know maybe me and god talked about it right but i i hold dear children um but that don't mean i i'm i'm having them or i gotta go get some or i gotta be able to claim them you um, got a whole bunch of kids shannon hey y'all take these suckers back i'm tired <laughs> and my pockets are struggling so y'all take them back <laughs> Uh, a whole bunch of kids Shannon <laughs> right but I mean I'm just saying like we you know thinking about those things that we make some assumptions that people want certain things I think about owning a home uh, you know I have been blessed congratulated uh, and thankful that God lives within me to, to have owned a home um, come September for 20 years that's crazy mm. as a single person right they tell you, you got to be with somebody for you to be able to do these things but when you're following God and you're content with what God gives you, yeah, I can move into something bigger, but why, <laughs> right? What difference for me right now is I got a place to go lay my head. And if somebody else needs a place to stay, guess where they can come? There is a couple of the bedrooms and a whole basement that they can have. So thank you for um, telling me that, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm thankful when people, you know, we talk about contentment. Um, it, it's at various levels and, uh, I think we got to, we have to be mindful of that. So I, I appreciate that part of the conversation. And then, and then again, you know, when it says the ability to be content, um, you know, for they shall inher inherit the earth. So inherit the earth. That means, you know, yeah, you, you see the things here on earth, but to me, it'll be so much better if you can inherit the things that are in heaven, you know, because you're with God, you know, you're with Jesus Christ, you're with, you, you're there, and you inherit the earth, I, I don't know, it just. Yeah, you know, thank God for, we're we going to be having, having a mansion and all of that mm -hmm. in heaven, but can I just get a little piece of that here on earth too, <laughs> you know, just, you know, I'm just, right. I'm just saying, you know, I'm not trying to be haughty or anything like that, but it sure would be nice to experience uh, some of this here, you know, like they talk about, living life in that more abundantly speaks to the now we don't have to wait till heaven to get it all you know mm -hmm. so y'all just saying it's now here you know so I, I think yes that makes I understand the inheriting of the earth you know we, we can we're gonna get some now and later right as the as the candy would go okay anyone else have any comments or anything on the first three of the um, the attitude. Okay. Well, the next one is uh, God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. I'm sure it says something different, maybe in other translations. Um, so my fourth meaning for that is blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Because of Christ, we can cling to the promise of everlasting righteousness in heaven. While we are called to live like Christ, we are also, we also have to have forgiveness of sin. Talk about that. Forgiveness of sins. 
and hunger and thirst for righteousness. I think that's appropriate for this month that we're in and celebrating where everyone is uh, taking this time to celebrate African-American history. You think about all the injustices and different things that we have faced as a people when we get to this and you think we're hungry and thirsty for righteousness and, you know, that only that justice that only can come from from God and what he allows, you know, what he provisions for us. I think this speaks very loudly to, you know, in the end, you know, we will win, we'll be victorious. Um, you know, even though victory sometimes doesn't look like what we want it to look like, but I think that, you know, this is a promise that, you know, that hunger and that thirst as we are thirsting after the things of God, after the justice of God and living on the right side of that justice, then we shall be filled, meaning we will be satisfied. And so mm -hmm. I think that that's an awesome sentiment to, you know. Anyone else? We can cling to the promise of everlasting righteousness in heaven. Um, righteousness means right standing, I do believe. Uh, so right standing in heaven while we are called to live like Christ, you know, we also have forgiveness of sin. So in the process of living like Christ, we not saying that you're just supposed to give, go out and sin purposely, <laughs> but we also have the forgiveness of sin from Christ. Salvation. That's what I see in that part right there. Salvation. And I'm going to push the Bible scholars on here a little bit and y'all help me because Right. So we talk about this conversation of righteousness um, and we can only be made right. We are only made right because of Christ. Right. Lisa, that's what right. you were your reference. Or, um, and so when it comes to living righteously. How would we and I'm, I'm got my mind on discipling folks, how do we talk to people about living righteously if we are only made right by the by the work of Christ on the cross. How do we live righteous? Hmm. I think part of this is um what we always talk about here at St. Matthew is um having you know your witness be kind of like the way you live your life. Like you know a person who is a non-believer, a person who doesn't believe. They, they may be the only Bible, I, I know that's so cliche to say, but like, <clears throat> they may be the only Bible you see. And if you believe in righteousness, it's like, you know what? Sam is really a nice guy. I wonder I wonder why he's always so humble. Then, you know, that gives me a chance to say, uh, because um, I'm, I'm humble because Christ redeemed me and my standing with him has made me righteous. It's been, and like, you know, I'm not always perfect, but one thing I know that, you know, I'm covered for grace, but that doesn't give me the excuse to, you know, keep on with sinning, as it says in um, Romans what, 8 1 or something like that. So, yeah. Reverend, can I ask you a question? Okay. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead. I was just trying to ask Reverend Hancock just a repeat a question. I was trying to get a better understanding. Um, so, and and I'm I'm struggling with the question because I've I've kind of struggled with this for a while. I probably just need to do some some deeper studying. But when we talk about righteousness, um, we are made right by the work of Christ, right? We can only be seen as righteous by God through, through like God looking at Christ on the cross, we are made right. And maybe I, if I'm misunderstanding that, that might be why I'm getting thrown off. But, and so my question becomes, 
how can we live righteously when in essence our righteousness doesn't come from us and 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 i may be thinking too deep i may not be thinking enough but i can't uh, i'm struggling with that connection so you you're asking how can we in re in reference to those who are looking at us those who aren't saved i mean how does that fit in is that what you mean yeah okay i probably should pull it back well and, and i appreciate the push in terms of the question um because i probably need to put some deeper thought on onto how to ask the question so right i can say that i can live um according to um the fruit of the spirit right i can be all those things <laughs> right now that my mind just threw a whole blank that i learned when i was a kid um does that make but that doesn't make me being kind and 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 nice to folks and you know loving on people that doesn't make me righteous because non-believers can literally do those things too so how i guess how do right, we explain right. to folks righteousness from a spiritual standpoint um so that it makes sense makes sense and it it recognizes that it ain't really nothing you can do to get you into heaven. Because sometimes we take, oh, he lived a righteous life. So he going to heaven. What does that mean? What does that look like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think that you're right as far as our righteousness only comes from our um, belief in Christ mm -hmm. and Christ washing our sins and, and, and all of that. I'm with you there. Okay. Um, I would say that our righteous living comes out of that righteousness. That mm. is because when we accept Christ, then our his spirit comes with, within us and then it changes us. It causes us to want to act right. That's what God's spirit does. Mm. It, 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 it makes us whole. It makes us better. It makes us want to live differently, act differently. And we don't act differently because we're trying to necessarily because we're trying to be right. Um, but I think the correct posture would be that the spirit of the Lord is causing me to act differently and therefore that's how I act differently and then it was also explained to me that when you do act differently that is a witness to others when people see you not reacting the way someone else will react it says something and that draws people in to to the way that you live it is the witness so we don't necessarily try to be right because it, uh, at the end of the day it's the spirit of the lord that makes us right and and and, and convicts us to, that's kind of what I think. I don't know if that helps or hurts her. It, um, it does. I think as you were talking, I got right. Um, sort of right living is empowered by the spirit. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, I'll, yeah. I can sit there for a minute. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I kind of want to, I know I'm, I'm reading out of the book, but it says um, here, but this doesn't mean this doesn't mean they're free to do anything they want. Rather in Jesus and in the spirit, they have been introduced to an even deeper understanding of God and his righteous requirements. What's more in Jesus, they have received redemption and forgiveness of sins. And in the spirit, they have been given the ability to live righteous lives that are pleasing to God. I don't know if that I guess that I'll confirm to you. I couldn't have said it better. Praise the Lord. No. Um, yeah. I like how you said it ability. Because we can't yeah. do it with that. We can't live right without. <laughs> right. It, it right. gives us do yeah. right. So, so yeah. I just saw that in the book. So um I just wanna <laughs> thank you all for putting up with me. <laughs> Uh, we're going to stop there. Um, I still, we still have four more, but maybe I'll get the opportunity to speak to teach the other four. Um, is there any other questions or anything concerning these uh, that we have discussed, or any other comments? Thank, Just, thank you, Reverend Lewis, for bringing this up. It, 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 it gave us an opportunity to really have that open and honest conversation about things that we've just taken for granted that we understood and known. 
And, and thank you, Fat Pastor, for always reminding us of the, the Eurocentric view and then the view that impacts us as African Americans, you know. So thank you. And Shannon, thank you for your question that had us all wondering if we could even be righteous. Watch it, watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Thank you, Shannon. I, I thank you. Right thank you. Is empowered by the spirit. There you go, Rhonda. Put it on the shirt. Let's go. <laughs> yes. So I, I want to uh, leave this with you. Um, these uh, scriptures will encourage you and give you hope as you face each day, knowing that you are called blessed. No matter your age, job, or family role, if you apply these Beatitudes to your life, you will experience a joyful, fulfilled life. You can read the full Bible passage where you can read the rest of them to get a better understanding. But I just, I, I feel that uh, thus far, I think I've been in, cl in class for a month now. <laughs> and so, um, kind of opened my eyes to some things that I did not know especially when it came to the beatitudes because you you read them and you read you know how you read something over and over again and then you read it again and you say oh I didn't know that was there so that's that's what it's that's what's intriguing me right now because you know when he started teaching these I was like wow I never thought of it that way so um bear with me and let's congratulate her on her A in the class. Woo, woo, woo. I don't know about all that, but. You, no. girl, you earn that. So we thank you yeah. for even going. A lot more to learn. And like I said, I did not know that Matthew broke down like in five discourses. I just did not know that until now. But each one has a different topic. You know, like the uh, the uh, beatitudes and the different things that Jesus did, but it all breaks it down to how he how he, about his life as he went through. So I'm excited, <laughs> Pastor. Was you going to say something? I uh, just thank you for uh, the, the study and bringing and, and bringing that to our attention and um, really provide some great conversation and and, and, and thought provoking um, things in our minds. So I appreciate appreciate your work in this. Uh, Reverend Hancock, can you close us out in prayer, please? Yeah, I sure can. Um, thank you, O oh God, for. It's time of gathering for a space where we can um, uh, hear, read, study, uh, even in some places, and wrestle, even God, with, with your word. We thank you, God, that we are spirit filled people who um, know how to tap into spirit to get um, clarity um, and the truth that you would have us to have in this time and space. I pray, oh God, that you would pour back into. Reverend Lewis, all that she's expended on today. Those who may be traveling um, and trying to listen, God, we pray safe travel. For those of us who still have work to do after this, God, I ask that you would give us energy and strength um, and then just be with those who could not be with us on tonight for whatever reason. Uh, we thank you, O oh Lord, for your word, for it is indeed um, the light by which we ought to walk and live. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. See y'all Sunday. Uh-huh. Have a good evening. Too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.